for was the milk spilling incident. Was it a well designed coffee holder? No, not a, not a great design coffee holder. Uh, this one's good though. Yeah. This one's good. Uh, and we are headed south. We're going to Home Depot because we need a tremendous amount of paint for Kathy's project. Which, which is a really large appendage. Something. I can't really say what it is. Cover. cover. It's a cover. It's a cover. Of, a, a cover? Covers. No, don't point. We have the vet for a few more days. Uh, we're also going to see Sean and Isla because as of March 4th, which is coming up in a couple weeks, she will, uh, Isla, will be one month away from having her baby. And that means Sean is one month away from being a dad. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Uh, <laughs> very excited. My son. Yeah. And uh, Abigail Bailey is the name of the baby. We're just looking forward to it, man. It's not necessarily the most practical car to have here in Malibu. It's a great driver, but uh, I wouldn't necessarily want to have it around when it's pouring down rain or uh, when we get mudslides or things like that. Probably makes more sense to have a monster truck. I'm gonna go over to my dad's place, you know, Fireball Pop. Been invited to a special private screening of the movie Red Sparrow. So I'm picking my dad up in this here Corvette, grab a quick lunch. We're gonna go over to Fox Studios and uh, check out the premiere of this movie. I've heard a lot of good things. I'm hoping it's good. And the whole plan of today's vlog is to be able to tell you guys whether it is or not. But I decided to bring my dad because if you're not familiar with who Fireball Pop is, his name is Anthony Lawrence, and he's probably one of the most published writers in Hollywood. He's an incredible sniffer for good story, and he knows something good when he sees it. Well, I thought I'll take him along and get his opinion on the movie too. Above and beyond, you know, whether I think it's good or not, you gotta get a very serious expert. So, that's what I'm doing. dad's and I'm trying to figure out how to get him into the car. It's it's kind of low, but oh, I got an idea. What's up? Like a glove. What do you think of the Corvette? I think it's terrific. I think it's a, uh, you know, beautifully constructed, uh, Sleek, lightweight, mm -hmm. uh, beautiful. Would you pay a hundred grand for this? If I had a hundred grand that I, you know, wanted to spend on a good car that, uh, in this. You wouldn't class. buy this. No, I wouldn't buy this. <laughs> cool to ride it. Yeah. I haven't driven it, but it really rides smooth. Uh, it's got a little bit of uh, bumps here and there, but but uh, it's it's a. It's a. Seems like it feels like a solid car. It is. Feels yeah. like a heavier car than it really is. You want to drive it? Do I want to drive it? Yeah. No. Uh, we're gonna go to La Salsa, which is one of the last remaining awesome burrito places on the planet. Oh, terrific. I'm sure you guys know good burrito places, but La Salsa was in Malibu for a long time, and then they left for no reason, and it really pissed me off. So uh, um, I found another one, so that's what we're gonna go do. Great. Yeah. First review, the burrito, how was that? 
burrito was fabulous. Uh, technically, this is the second review because we kind of reviewed the car already. Yes. So the burrito is number two, and it, it worked. Worked for me. Yeah. It's uh, just about as good a burrito as I've ever had. It was. It was soft. It was. Uh, delicious. Delicious yeah. in every respect. I hope that the uh, the movie is soft and delicious too. Well, that's a good Yeah, probably not though. It's probably uh, going to be violent. And... I, the last Sparrow I had was quite some time. <laughs> now you guys know where my humor comes from. It's really, bad. really bad. Yeah, it starts with that guy. In the parking lot at Fox. When's the last time you were at Fox? Uh, around 1965. <laughs> the year I was born. Yeah, pretty much. What were you doing at Fox when you should have been there with me when I was born? I was making money. I was trying to pay for your diapers. <laughs> uh, that's true. Actually, um, I was stuck in the hospital for a period of time, right? Yes. You couldn't, you couldn't get me out of the hospital. That's true. Or get mom out. Yeah, well. That's true. I, I had to wait till my check came, came in from Cades County. <laughs> Of the Apes here? What yes, else? Yes, of the Apes, Cades County, and I, when I was an actor, I did, uh, I was in uh, uh, River of No Return. River of No Return. Netflix, River of No Return, and look for this guy. He looks a little bit different, though. You know you were seeing? Yeah. What? Red Arrow. Red Sparrow. I was talking. River of No Return um, on Netflix. And, and who was in it? Robert Mitchum and Marilyn Monroe. And what part did you play? Uh, I played a uh, a man in a wheel in a in a barber chair. Okay. I had stuff on my face, and Robert Mitchum hit this guy and knocked him into my lap. <laughs> that was the extent of my. That was your role. That was my role. Did you scream or have a line or anything? No, no. I just reacted with all you know of my Shakespearean uh, <laughs> training background. Yeah. Yeah. He screamed like a like a little girl. Uh, we were just in the, uh, the Zanuck building at Fox in the Blakely, James Blakely Theater to see Red Sparrow. Red Sparrow, very good film. Yeah. Well made. It was. The performances were good. Yep. The writing was good. Uh, it was low key, a little difficult to follow at times, but like a Rubik's Cube Russian puzzle. It, it was. was. It kind of felt like an old 60s spy thriller. Right. It had that style, even though it was in color and everything yeah. else. Jean Le Carré. Yeah. Kind of. A few torture scenes that were a little intense. Got a little iffy in terms of uh, uh, you want to walk out. Yeah, if, if you don't want to see that stuff, I have a, the perfect plan. It's called a eyes, you know, covered. Close your eyes. Yeah. Right. The screenplay was fantastic. It was directed well. Very, very well. Performances were, were uh, top, top notch. All in all. And anything that bothered you? Anything that bothered me? Yeah, you said it was a little um, hard to well, follow certain parts? It was a little difficult to follow, but I, I'm complex. Old, I'm tired, so <laughs> it's just me. Uh, you wouldn't think. Look uh, how small he is. Look how tiny his head is compared to mine. It's got a little tiny head. Uh, you wouldn't think that uh, someone with such a tiny head could be such an amazing writer, and he is. <laughs> you were to have written this, would you have written it any different? Uh, quite different. I would have written it as a comedy. Huff it all the way back to the parking lot, which is um, you do what? Got to huff it all the way back to the parking lot. It's it's a little ways from here, but uh, we did spot a couple of cool cars. To show you guys. But I think that that bus, at least Dad thinks that bus, 
is from Romancing the Stone. Yes, it, it looks exactly like that. It bus. looks like uh, yes, I remember. the, uh, what was the That's name of the town? Ball bus. <laughs> Red Sparrow is that she's always hiding in places you can't expect. say too much more about Red Sparrow because there is an embargo and uh, I will have an article that will come out on uh, in the next few days about that. If you're anxious to see that movie, uh, I'll be kind of going a little more in depth. But be warned, it's, uh, it's pretty intense. It's pretty intense. It's not necessary for the faint of heart, but it's certainly well made. Okay, a couple of side notes. It's kind of an exciting time because there's a lot of different things that are going on. I want to give you an update as to what's happening with Kathy. Uh, right behind me, right behind actually you guys, is what Kathy is building. And it's ginormous and it's just about finished. I couldn't show uh, anything with that, but we, we are filming some stuff. So once it gets approved and once it airs, then I'll be able to show you guys exactly what it is that Kathy built. If you watch the show, then you'll pretty much see that thing. But you'll get it behind the scenes and get an idea about what she went through to build it. And she's going to be building two more. So there's three total. Another exciting thing is my brand new Pirates book just came out. Pirates coloring book. Check it out! It's so shiny. But it's full of all kinds of cool piratey stuff. Cool, huh? But on top of that, I also did a second book. This one for the Channel Islands Maritime Museum, Adventures on the High Sea. So this is a pirate book also. The difference between the two is that this one you can only get at the Channel Islands Maritime Museum. So if you go to that museum and you check the things out, this is the book that will be there. You can't get that anywhere else. This book is available online. It's not available uh, at stores or anything like that. Uh, you can only get this one online. This is cool because it's sponsored by them. See, right there. And if you live in LA and you haven't been to the Channel Islands Maritime Museum, you gotta do it. It's really spectacular. We, we did the vlog where we, we uh, went up there with a bunch of people from Wheels and Waves and we had a great time. It was just really fun. And now, as of uh, in a, just a couple of days, I'm delivering a whole box of these books. Super cool. You gotta get one of these. I stress a lot on my blog, as well as on this blog, the importance of doing what you love. And although many of you may watch this and may, may understand that that's a, uh, a simple concept to understand, it's actually so simple that a, uh, you know, a child can, can understand it, but the hard part comes from actually doing it, taking action on this. We do a really good job at giving ourselves excuses as to why we shouldn't do things. It's generally a fear-based concept. We don't do it because we fear that something's gonna happen or it's not gonna work out, or, or you know, what if this happens, what if that happens. And you got to get around those things. You got to get through those things. Success is actually a very simple concept. It's, it comes from pinpointing exactly what it is that you want and maintaining a focus towards exactly what it is that you want and, and make that unwavering. And don't stop until you get that thing. I've worked on this my whole life and there's been times where I, you know, I, I, I was having a hard time and I was going through what maybe a lot of what you guys are going through. Some of you may worry about health. Some of you may worry about money. Some of you may be worrying about relationships. But if you can just look at the areas in your life that are working and understand the, the, the way you look at that particular thing is why it is that way. Find those successes and apply that same model to the things that aren't working. But you don't get healthy by concentrating on disease. You don't get wealthy by concentrating on poverty. You don't get peace by constantly focusing on struggle. And trust me, there's a lot of people that focus on struggle. Be mindful of how you talk and be mindful of how you think and what you say and your actions. And make sure that all those things come in cahoots together, all work together for one common goal. You gotta keep your mind focused. You gotta stay focused. And as you do that, things will start to appear. Things will start to show up. Things to prove that you're on the path to success. Now, I'm not talking about financial success, although that is, that's important for a lot of people. Success is also good health, good relationships, uh, peace of mind, and a good quality of life. You gotta find a way to do what you love. If you're young and starting a new career, do what you love. If you're retired and, and you don't know what to do after you've had a long job, 30 years on the job, figure out what it is that you love. Stop complaining, stop whining about things not going the way that you want them to be. Start thinking about what you would enjoy and start doing those things. And the more time you spend 
doing that, or the universe will start bringing things to you. All right, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate every single one of you for taking the time all the way to the end of this video and hanging out with me. And if you're local and you have a cool car and you want to do an article, something like this, shoot me an email. We'll hook up. I'll check out your car and I'll make you a star. That's it, people. Peace out.